Hey, my name is Russell Parker. I'll be presenting to y'all my ethnography project that I did this semester, <clears throat> starting around January and ending about middle of April. It was an ethnography project about Marion Square. For those who don't know, an ethnography is basically a study where you go to a, a set social place and observe for a specific time period each week. Um, to give you a little bit of background about Marion Square, uh, it was six and a half acres. It used to be used as the Citadel Parade Ground until 1922. Um, it was renamed actually after that in honor of Francis Marion. Um, and in 1940s, uh, <clears throat> the Washington Light Infantry and the Sumter Guards prevented the city officials from paving it into a parking lot. And then again in 1956, they prevented it from becoming a shopping center. Um, and now it is currently operated as a public park under a lease by the city of Charleston. Some of the uses for Marion Square, um, the Farmer's Market is probably a big one. Um, they host a lot of festivals and events there. Um, uh, a lot of the College of Charleston students and local residents go there to eat lunch and just lay there and play frisbee and other sports. Um, some students use it as a study location <clears throat> and it's also a large tourist attraction. There's a few monuments around the park that people come to see and take pictures of. Uh, some of the main observations that I had, like I said, I went there, so I went there every Tuesday and every Thursday of every week. And I noticed that everybody seemed to gather around the fountain see, pictured here. This is King Street right here and Calhoun right here. Um, there were a good bit of people, and this was also at about 12 to 1 p.m. during the day. Um, there were a good bit of people in the grass area, but a lot of people, the main cluster of people seemed right around this this blue space, this fountain. And so one of the problems that I observed about this area is that there's no real seating. There's some benches built into the fountain that people can sit on about every 10 feet. And then around the whole corner over here, you see the concrete barrier pictured here. So people are just sitting on the concrete, eating their lunch, talking on the phone, and things of that sort. Uh, you can see again, here's a better version or picture where you can see the, the bench engraved into the fountain. Um, and then here you can see a concrete barrier. There was a construction project going on on the other side of Marion Square. And just about every day, this concrete barrier right here would be lined with, um, with construction, work, construction workers sitting on the, on the concrete. Um, here you can see some more. A lot of people would also lean up against these trees and talk on the phone and talk to other people as well. Um, one other thing that I found to be pretty interesting was how the walkway through the Marion Square is a big X. People would use it, especially College of Charleston students, to cut through from Meeting Street. Instead of walking all the way up to Calhoun, they would cut through the park. It's also a much more enjoyable walk, but it's also a little bit faster for them as well. Um, a lot of people, you know, like I said, I was there from about 12 to 1 every day or every Tuesday and Thursday. So most of the time I saw people bringing their lunches and snacks and food, um, you know, on their work break or just getting out of class. Um, most people would sit on the ground in the, by the, either by the concrete barriers or on the concrete barriers. And then there were some benches that lined on the Calhoun side and the King Street side. but. Most of the time they were filled with, with homeless people, so nobody sat there to eat their lunches. And then the people that would go out into the middle of the green space would just sit on the ground. And so there would be people scattered all over the place. Not as many people as I was expecting to see, but still people sitting around. Um, one of the problems that I thought about with this was that there's no place for them to really eat their lunch. Um, you know, nobody wants to eat their lunch on the ground or sitting on a concrete barrier. Um, so. There's no picnic tables in the park for people to eat lunch at. Um, more than 75% of the people I observed did not stay longer than 30 minutes. I would say maybe even 15 minutes. They were only there for a brief period of time. Um, I think that this is partially due to the lack of comfortable seating in the area. Um, as I mentioned before, most of the park benches were occupied by the homeless. 
and there was a, uh, a coffee stand called Sassy Ass Coffee, and a lot of people would come there and hang out for about five to ten minutes and then um, get on with their day. Um, so again, as I said about some problems, and I'll also talk about some possible solutions. Uh, the poor seating area, it's very uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, you can only sit there for so long. Um, so one of the solutions that I had would be to improve the, the seating and maybe improve the size of the, the blue space corner since that seems to be where everybody is and you would probably get a larger section of people, <clears throat> a larger demographic of people and they would actually be able to stay there for longer periods of time and interact with other people. Um, the trash and the cigarette butts was a main problem. I saw, especially around the fountain, there would be, I mean, as many cigarette butts as there were leaves. The trash, there were a lot of straws and uh, a lot of tops to, to cans and bottles and things like that. Um, the other issue that I have already previously discussed was the homeless. Most of the benches were, were occupied by the homeless, and if they weren't on the benches, they would just be sprawled out in the grass like this guy. And picture right here is, a, is the sassy ass coffee stand. So in the morning, <clears throat> I'd go there to get a cup of coffee and there would always be somebody laying, sleeping where they had been sleeping from the night before. Um, so some of the theories that we discussed in class that I was easily able to relate back to this ethnography um, was social seating, how seating can create uh, more socially friendly atmosphere, um, movable seating, so how people can move and, and eat lunch together and, and things like that. Um, and then more specifically, Elijah Anderson's Cosmopolitan Canopy. So like how this social seating and <clears throat> movable seating can bring people together. So if I was going to eat lunch in Marion Square and there was a picnic table, right here with somebody sitting there who most likely would be a tourist or somebody that I didn't know, instead of going to sit randomly in the grass somewhere, I would most likely sit next to him and strike up a conversation with him. And we would begin to talk. And I just easily related it to how Anderson talked about how urban structures <clears throat> and spaces can bring people together, people with different demographics and race. And I thought this could be especially interesting and pertinent to how divided America is right now, and I thought that this would be very beneficial. But that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Watch this,